My name is Juan Salas. Welcome to Taxes in an LLC and Owner's Compensation. We are very glad to have you this Friday morning and uh, hope that you like the presentation. We love your feedback. We love your, um, your experiences, your stories after the class, before the class as well. So let us know. Let's begin. Okay, the agenda for today, we're going to be talking about tax structure first, then how to correctly pay yourself of the LLC owner. We're going to briefly cover tax compliance on salary for federal and Nevada, and also give you some action plan and tips at the end. My name is Juan Salas. I'm an instructor with UNR Extension. First, let's begin with uh, letting you know about the website for the Department of Business and Industry. This is a fantastic website where you can find tons of resources, the roadmap, the Business Resource Center. So basically our interactive guides that will point you to other resources um, for licensing, certifications, and all the other business subjects. Today, we're gonna to talk about the tax portion of the LLC. So let's begin with our first item, understanding your LLC tax structure, okay? So what is an LLC? Let's begin with that. An LLC is known for a limited liability company. And basically, it's a legal entity created through the status of the state, okay? The state, the Nevada state creates the LLC in this particular case, okay? And particularly the chapter 86, that's the chapter on the Nevada revised status that is related to the limited liability companies here in our state. If you go to the Nevada revised status, you will find this definition, limited liability company or company means a limited liability company organized by filing the articles of organization with the Secretary of State and existing under this chapter. So everything begins on the state level. They will create the LLC for you. Okay. The articles of organization must be documented and filed with the state. It doesn't matter if you go and open... Um, you get a license in North Las Vegas or in Henderson, and you say that you have an LLC. No, the articles of organization has to be documented and filed with the Secretary of State. The owners of the LLC are called members, and the members can be any individuals, corporations, or LLCs. So an LLC can own an LLC and then own an LLC and keep going and going. There are some uh, businesses, type of businesses like the insurance that cannot be an LLC structure. They have to do a corporation structure. An LLC can offer limited liability protection that a sole proprietorship or partnership cannot. Okay. But we are talking about a sole proprietorship that is basically one individual that went and got a license, did not open an LLC. So there's no protection. There's no separation of the individual and the LLC. They operate as one and the same. An LLC has to have an operating agreement. Basically, the operating agreement are the rules of the game. You know, um, this morning I was listening to a, to a lawyer talking about um, asset protection. And uh, one of the things that uh, he mentioned during the program was if an LLC doesn't have an operating agreement, how do they dictate what is wrong, what is not? So in the whole uh, scenario of limited liability protection, lacking an operating agreement puts you in trouble because you are not following the procedures of the LLC structure. You know, um, you don't have an operating agreement, you are not an LLC, you are not protected. That, that was his, uh, his message, okay? So 
Now that we have defined an LLC, how do the LLC pay taxes? Okay. The IRS will look at the number of members and the election of the LLC. First, the IRS will see, okay, you know, how many members do you have? And what is your preference? What was your election for the to be taxed on? So the IRS will say, or it's gonna put you in one of these four categories, a sole proprietorship, a corporation, a partnership, or an S corporation, okay? These are the full, the four choices, the most common ones. There are some others, but the most common ones. Okay, so if uh, if somebody comes to my tax office and says, uh, I'm paying taxes as an LLC, that's an incomplete statement because an LLC has to be under one of the, those tax structures. There's no an LLC tax structure itself. IRS doesn't recognize that. And who, who collects taxes? IRS. Okay. Also, once you open an LLC, you will probably need your EIN number for, to open a bank account and to build credit. If you have, if you're planning to have employees, yes, you would definitely need an EIN number. And the EIN number is provided by the IRS. It's a tax identification number, so it is related to the IRS. You're not gonna get your EIN from the state or from the local licensing departments. So this is how you should start your, um, your mapping of how you're gonna pay taxes. Of the default categories, okay, basically. If there's one member, by default, you're going to pay taxes as a sole proprietorship. If you have more than one member, you're by default, you're going to pay taxes as a partnership. Now, you have the right and you have the option to make an election, but you have to communicate that to the IRS about being taxed an, as an S corp or a corporation, okay? So the LLC begins on the state level and then when it's time to pay taxes, you have to see if by default, you're gonna be a sole proprietor or a partnership or you are electing to be an S corp or a corporation, okay? This is the probably the most important part of the presentation, just to visualize those four options and how do you get to those four options. Let's talk briefly about the four categories. So proprietorship. If you are one member LLC, you're going to get taxes as a sole proprietorship. And you're going to pay taxes on a Schedule C with your 1040. So if before opening the LLC, you were in business, you were a sole proprietorship. Now that you have an LLC, it didn't change anything. You still getting taxed as a sole proprietorship. Once you got the LLC, yes, there's a difference in the legal separation and protection. The LLC will operate independently from the owner. but from the tax point of view, there's no difference. You didn't save taxes, it's, you're getting extra protection. Now, the owner is gonna have to pay FICA taxes and personal income taxes on the net profit, even if the money remains in the business account. And we're gonna cover an example to show you this with more numbers. Keep separate accounts. Always, once you open an LLC, keep all the business on the one side and the personal on the other side. And make sure you make your estimated tax payments. We are in a system that is pay as you earn, okay? So every quarter, 
if you are a sole proprietorship, you are supposed to send your estimated tax payments. That's, we have another class for that. Uh, partnership. The partnership, it's kind of the same as a sole proprietorship, but more people, okay? So in the partnership, since we cannot put everybody on my tax return, we're going to do a separate tax return, which is the form 1065. And the 1065, we're going to put all the income, all the expenses. And at the end of the year, everybody's going to get their portion on a K-1 and is going to pay its own FICA taxes and personal income taxes. Again, same as a sole proprietorship, uh, but just on the portion of their business, okay? Again, you do not make wages from your partnership to the owners. If you have other employees, yes, you know, you, you, you give them their wages, but the member, the owner cannot receive wages from the partnership, cannot receive wages from the sole proprietorship neither and they have to make estimated payments. We're gonna talk about how they get paid, okay? But let's just cover the do not do uh, items. The corporation, remember, this tax structure is an election. So you have to file the form 8832. IRS is gonna send you a response and you're gonna have to file a form 1120, which will include all the income and the expenses. The particularity of the C corporation is that it does not spill over to the members. It does not affect the members' tax return at the personal level. Why? Because the corporation the LLC that is taxed as a C corporation will pay 21% taxes on the net profit, okay? So um, it will pay its own taxes, nothing to do with the personal side of the members. The members, how do they get paid? They can receive wages, they can receive dividends, uh, which are then taxed again at the personal level. From the C corporation, yes, you can make wages to anybody, members and employees as well. That gets to be a problem because there's double taxation. Uh, first, you pay 21% at the corporate level, and then at the personal level, again, some of the money. But uh, there's some use for C corporations, so do not just discard this option. S corporations, again, the LLC has to um, elect to be taxed as an S corp. The LLC has to fill out the form 2553, send it to IRS, wait for a response. Then we'll file the 1120S, which will include all income, expenses. We're gonna come up with a net profit. That net profit is gonna be distributed to the partners, to the members, okay? Based on the percentages. Very different to the C-Corp. The C-Corp doesn't affect the members at the personal level. The S-Corp doesn't pay its own taxes. It will distribute the income or losses to the members. Now, on the C-Corp, you got the option to paying wages or not. On the S Corp, all the members have to receive a W-2, okay? A reasonable salary. What is reasonable? There's a lot of discussion about that. You know, um, if you're a manager, how much a manager is supposed to earn? If you're a salesperson, if you are, you know, uh, everything else from janitor to manager, marketing and website designer. You know, what's your salary? Um, so that's uh, that's a very 
tricky area, but you have to come up with a real number, a reasonable number for your salary. Everything else, you know, if there's some money left over as profits, it will di be distributed to the owners as well. Okay, now we're going to see more of the dynamics of money. Now that we have defined the four types of tax, tax structures, we're going to see how it flows to the other, um, to the owners. Question so far. Uh, yes, you will get a copy of the presentation. Even better, you're going to get the entire video. Okay, <laughs> it's like a promotional <laughs> advertisement. It's even better. You're going to get access to the whole video 24-7 on our website. Give us some time and we're going to edit this video and we're going to put it 24-7 on the website. You can pause, you can continue, and you can, you know, if you need to go to sleep faster, you can use it as well. We welcome you to use it as you need it. Um, any other questions regarding the four tax structures so far? Remember, you got the default. By default, you're going to get tax like this. And you got the election options. Okay, let's continue. How to correctly pay the LLC owner? All proprietorship is going to be a draw. If you have an LLC getting taxed as a sole proprietorship, you take the money out. A partnership is going to be kind of the same. The only thing is we have more people involved, so there are going to be draws. But if there's anything left, we're going to get, we're going to distribute it among the members. C Corp. You have two options. You get wages from your C corporation or you get dividends from your C corporation. I know there's a lot of talk about making a loan from your C corp or return on capital and things like that, but we're going to concentrate on the most uh, common situations, not too much on details in, of uh, tax strategies. C corp. You have to make a W-2 and you can make draws as well, okay? Talk about sole proprietorships. It's going to be a draw. It's going to be basically a payment from the LLC account to the owner. It's as simple as that. You go, you make a check to yourself. It is going to be an owner. Here's the kick. There's, uh, there's no, the payment is not considered a tax deduction, okay? Why? Because it's not taken as a W-2, it's not taken as a payment of an independent contractor. You cannot make an independent contractor payment or a W-2 from your sole proprietorship, okay? That's a no-no. You're going to pay up more taxes that way. And there's a reason for not doing this. If, if you're doing that, you are paying, you're overpaying some taxes. And also you are um, overpaying um, unemployment insurance for the state. Okay. So a draw, money, sell, uh, check a transfer from the LLC to the owner. Do not make any personal expenses from the LLC. Why? Because you are going to diminish the protection of the LLC, and that's going to be reclassified as a, as a draw. Any personal expenses are not deductible, so they're going to become a draw. But in the meantime, you are diminishing the protection of your LLC. So, um, Please do not make personal expenses from your LLC account. Partnerships. Oh, so retiro de dueño. That means owner's draw in Spanish. Um, 
Let's do an example. We got $40 as member contribution. Okay? You put $40 on your bank account. Then you had some expenses about uh, materials. Let me check this. Rotate things. Oh, I learned this. Check it out. So you got um, a contribution. You got materials. You got sales expense, rent expense, gas expense. And then you got a member draw, okay? Basically a member draw. You took $10,000 of your bank account and you put it towards your uh, personal account. There's $5 or $5,000 in the bank account uh, left over. What happens on the Schedule C where you report your sole proprietorship? Member contribution, that's in count in the Schedule C. We're gonna count the materials, we're gonna count the sales, we're gonna count the rent expense, and then you're gonna count the gas. And at the end, your Schedule C, your taxes are gonna show minus 25. Why? Because we are not considering the member draw as an expense, as a deduction. So um, at the end, we have a positive balance, but no profit, therefore no taxes, okay? This is the interaction between what happens in the bank account and what happens on the taxes. So let's do another example. We got a $20 um, this, um, contribution. We got expenses, again but we have sales of 80. At the end, the owner took 30 out. So there was five left over on the bank account. On the tax side, again, we're gonna consider the revenue, the expenses. We're not gonna consider the member draws a deduction. So we have a profit of 15. In that particular case, we have a positive balance and also a profit, which means tax liability of 15.3% and federal taxes of 10% for that profit, the 15. So this is where you analyze, okay, my LLC is getting taxed as a sole proprietorship. Therefore, every quarter, I'm gonna make my calculations. I'm gonna take out my members draw. I'm gonna come up with my profit. Therefore, I know how much taxes I owed uh, for that particular quarter, okay? And then you start seeing, okay, is my LLC getting taxed in the most efficient way? Um, it's okay to make money, right? We're in business to make money, but just make sure you have enough to cover your tax liability as well as the owner, okay? Because you're making 15, but you have only five in the bank account. So make sure you have enough money to cover the tax liability with, uh, with whatever remains on the, on, on the LLC. You can pay from your personal account as well, but um, it's, it's just more organized. Ships, again, it's gonna be draws. We have more people, but kind of the same system. Draws are gonna come up from the LLC account to the owners. It is generally planned and agreed on the operating agreement. If you have more than one member, one owner, one, uh, we say one more, one more spoon making the mix, uh, better have the rules. You know, how much money are you going to get compensated? Because these draws are not going to be tax deductible, are not going to be a deduction. So there's going to be some taxes down the road. Generally, you should plan for this ahead of time and make sure it is on your operating agreement 
so the owners and all the persons do not uh, do whatever they want and keep the business afloat. No tax is taken away or considered as an independent contract. Okay, so the draw do not deduct any taxes, do not uh, make a 1099, do not make a, a W-2 at the end of the year. The payment is not considered a tax deduction. we we'll cover that. And there are no personal expenses from the LLC for no reason at all. There should be personal expenses from the owners from the LLC. It compromises the LLC protection and it will be re-categorized um, as, as an owner draw, okay? So oh, let's talk about kind of the same example. We got um, member contribution of 100, that doesn't count, it's not income. We got expenses of 40, we got sales of 55, we got rent expenses across, gas expenses across, we got a member draw of 60, okay? Therefore, we got $60 in uh, uh, as a positive balance in the bank account, but taxes says that is minus 30. What happens here? The 1065, the tax return of the partnership is gonna issue a K1P, PSM partnership, with a minus 15, uh, I'm considering only two members here, minus 15 to each one because of the 30 in losses. Very, very different the balances of the bank on what is calculated in the tax and what it happens or affects the members. Uh, we have a more positive <laughs> uh, scenario here where we have, you know, same income, same ex more income. We got a member's draw of 100. In this particular case, you know, somebody took uh, 50 and the other took 50. And then we have a net profit of 90. So we have a positive balance. We have a profit in the partnership. The profit, it will get distributed. I don't want to say distributed. I want to say um, it's going to, the K1 is going to port to the IRS that the member is, has to pay $45 or include 45 in their personal tax return, that's going to be subject to 15.3 and 10%. Why am I rephrasing this? Because it's very important to, to see that the bank account is with $45, but the members are getting tax on 45 Okay. They probably took 50 out as a member's draw, but they are getting tax on 45. This is a good scenario, but sometimes it doesn't happen. Sometimes it is um, on the, um, sometimes it is, happens on the, on the reverse. Sometimes all the money stays on the bank account there are no members draws, but you're still getting tax on the 45. Let's assume that those $100, okay? So the balance on the bank account is 145. Why? Because we're gonna buy equipment. We need more money. Uh, we're gonna hire um, a secretary. So we need more money in the bank account. Still, you're going to get tax on $45 on your personal side. So just make sure 
you are aware of this because this can be 45 or this can be 4,500 or this can be $45,000. So this 15.3 and 10% uh, can, can get bigger <laughs> real, real fast. T corporation. So on the C corporation, you're probably get, gonna get a salary. For your salary, yes, you have to make all the tax deductions like a regular employee. The payment of that salary, it is gonna be a tax deduction like any other salary. Now, the dividends, the dividends are not deductible. So if the company pays dividends, that is not deductible. Actually, the dividends are paid after profits. So they are not going to be deductible, and you have to include them and pay taxes on your personal side. Again, no personal expenses from the corporation. It will definitely limit the protection of the LLC. And any personal expenses will be reclassified as salary or dividends, which will carry uh, taxes and penalties. So make sure no personal expenses from an LLC on this in whatever tax structure you're, you have. Let's do um, a little bit of a workflow, how the money, goes from the C Corp to the member, okay? So we said wages. Wages are gonna be part of the operating expenses of the corporation. You're gonna do FICA deductions, federal tax deductions, and that W-2, that net income from the salary is gonna come up to the member. What happens with the profits on the C-Corp? It's gonna get taxed at 21%. Whatever profit is gonna get taxed at 21%. So whatever expenses you got, minus wages, minus everything else, your profit, your leftover is gonna get taxed to 21%. That money goes to the IRS, does not affect the member at all. Now, dividends, see, we see we have them here after profits. So the dividends are going to get paid to the member. And there's going to be a 1099 dividend issue. Uh, the same way you get a 1099 dividend when you get dividends from, from your mutual funds, from your stocks, from things like that. Um, it gets issued to the member for tax purposes. S corporation. In this particular case, you are going to get a salary because it's a law and you're going to get distributions if there's something left over <laughs> from your business. So members must receive a reasonable salary at the expense of the company. The payroll payment with tax deductions. FICA and federal, like any other W-2. The payment will be considered a deduction for the business, of course, like any W-2. Now, whatever is left over, a positive number or a negative number, is going to flow to the members' uh, to the members personal taxes. Okay? So if after making all W-2s and things like that, we have a profit, it will flow to the member's personal tax return. Again, no personal expenses because you are diminishing the protection and um, it can be reclassified as salary or, or deductions. Let's do the flow, the flow of money with the S-Corp. In the S-Corp, you're going to see income, expenses, oh, wages, and profit. How does it go to the member? First, we have the wages, same as the C Corp. In this particular case, you must do salaries 
a reasonable salary depending on their job. Now, the profit, it is distributed in the K1S, it is informed in the K1S, but there's no FICA taxes and C, yes, federal taxes. So this is where with proper control, you can save FICA taxes. This is why everybody likes the S Corp so much, but you have to be careful keeping up a reasonable salary. And you, if you have profits left over, are not gonna be subject to FICA taxes, which is the case of the sole proprietorship and the partnership. Everything that flows from a sole proprietorship and a partnership gets taxed with FICA and federal. In the S Corp, there is a opportunity where you can have the profit flow to the member without getting taxed for FICA taxes, okay? But follow the rules of keeping a reasonable salary and no personal expenses and good accounting system, proper reporting of K-1s, and you should be fine. Question so far. Um, we have, um, we're gonna give you access to this class later on, on our website, our new branded website. So you can uh, go back and review anything, but uh, let me know if, uh, let's do this. Um, write down in the chat if you want to, you know, what, what is your tax structure so far? Are you a sole partnership, S Corp or C Corp? And um, how do you like it? What, uh, what is the difficulty with that? Or let, me, or let me know your questions, okay? We, have, uh, we haven't lost anybody, so that's, that's a good thing. Let's proceed. Let's talk about salary compliance and taxes and at the federal level and in Nevada. Oh. This is uh, important forms and important dates, okay? So first, you always, always, always must request a W-4, a uh, I-9, a copy of social security and ID for your employers. You know, keep that on the employee's uh, records. Uh, if uh, they want to change anything, provide a W-4 every single year because things happen. You know, people get married, get divorced, have kids. Kids uh, leave the homes. They grow up. So provide a W-4 every single year to your employees so they can update their information, their addresses, and things like that. Every time you pay them, withhold tax for every single check. Now, those taxes, you have to deposit them, all the money taken, every 15 of the following month, of the payment. Use UFTPS. Don't forget. Do your 941s and an employment each quarter. And at the end of the year, by January 31st, make sure you send W-2s, W-3s, and pay your federal unemployment, which is the form 940 as well. This is a regular paycheck for somebody that is uh, single, is uh, paid bi-weekly, and uh, there's no dependents, it works for the sample company, okay? Do you remember the first time you got a paycheck and uh, 
in your mind, you made the calculation and you made $2,000, but then you see your check and it's only for $1,672. Okay. <laughs> uh, why? Because we have withholdings. We have social security tax, Medicare tax, and federal taxes. And it's the employer's responsibility to make those deductions, okay? And uh, basically you are taking money from your employee and now you have to take that money, match it and send it to IRS. 2000, but all these deductions take effect and you have only 1672 left. So what were the taxes that you took from your employee? Social Security and Medicare, which come up to 153. Now, as an employer, you have to match that. Half from the employee, half from the employer. So you have to contribute 153 as well. So, you have also in your pockets as an employer, the 175 that you took from your employee. So the total payment that you have to submit via EFTPS to the IRS is $481, okay? You're just making a check of $2,000 and now you have the responsibility of $481 that you have to manage the timing, make sure it is on the bank account, make sure it gets deposited and all those things, okay? But that's the rules and the duties of an employer. So let's see, this was paid on 815, okay? Let's assume we're gonna pay him again on 830. So we're gonna take this amount twice because this is only for one check. So two checks is gonna be four, four, it is eight, uh, $962, okay? You're gonna have to make a deposit of $962 on the 15th of the following month. This is for August. You're going to have to make the deposit on September. Okay. September 15, you have to make this deposit of $962 to the IRS. I'm just going very slow in this section because. I want you to understand the responsibility of the cash flow management that you have to have. Open up a savings account, put that money aside so you don't have to worry about it because it's $900 that you have to come up with by the 15th for sure. IRS doesn't play with, uh, with other people's money. They don't like it. Okay, any questions on this pay stuff? So far, pretty simple. If you already have employees, you are used to this procedure. And if you don't, and you are considering being an employee of your company, if you have an S Corp or a C Corp, or you are gonna planning to hire employees, you know, you should learn this dynamic now. Good, let's move along. You can raise your hand and I can open the mic if uh, you don't want to type. For Nevada, it's um, it's a little bit simpler. You know, uh, we have the unemployment insurance, which is uh, come up to a maximum of thirty thousand five hundred for new employers. The rate is two point nine five percent. It's actually, you know, it's close to 3% more. 
So definitely 3% more as another cost of having an employee on payroll. And this is a quick picture from the quarterly reporting uh, portal. It is very good, it is dynamic, and everything gets um, submitted online now, okay? Um, you just have to include the names of your employees, social security information, how much you pay them, and it will make their own calculations and uh, facilitate the options for payment as well, okay? You can actually um, record your bank information here, same way as EFTPS, and it will just make the withdrawals. Then we have another uh, small tax, uh, it's 0.05%. It will get calculated in the same portal as well. You don't have to do a separate form for that. What by tax? It's another tax that we have um, and it's, it's applicable to the payroll. Um, you can file this quarterly. And um, it's applicable to salaries above $50,000. So if you don't have any employees making that much money, it's probably be zeros. So uh, make sure, you know, 0.1475% um, it is tax on the salaries as well. Small little number, but it will definitely add up if you have more employees. Any questions so far? Good. So let's talk about some action plan and tips. This is a lot of um, um, a lot of information but we have to see how we can use it, okay? So having an LLC gives you protection, but it doesn't automatically save you in taxes. And that's a, a myth out there. Open an LLC and you're gonna pay less taxes, you know, just like this. Automatically, open an LLC, poof, taxes disappear. No, it is a process. You have to know what is your structure. You have to follow procedure, control your expenses, control your income, your cash flow. Yes, and it will save you taxes. It is a tool, you know. Um, it's like, uh, but you know how to use it. your question. Do you have the best tax structure for your LLC? Review your last tax return and see how you're getting taxed if you have an LLC or you're planning to have an LLC. There's no, um, there's no wonderful tax structure that works for everything. There's no such a thing. You have to evaluate the situation and then come up with an LLC. How much is your tax estimate under that structure? We talk about estimated taxes. If your LLC now is getting taxed as a sole proprietorship and you made profit, guess what? You have estimated taxes due. Make sure you know how much are those. You don't want to get to January and your tax guy is going to tell you you owe ten thousand dollars. You know, and part of that is FICA taxes, eight thousand dollars in FICA taxes. That cannot happen to anybody that is in this class. It cannot happen. I review, I refuse that that happens to anybody that is here. Why? Because you have the education and you know you can estimate your tax liability now uh, instead of figure it out later on January and February. Do you have the necessary information to evaluate your taxes? We can talk about tax structure all day long. What's the best advantages and disadvantages? But if you don't have the numbers to come up with your net profit, to come up with your total sales, your total expenses, how much was your owner's draw? You know, um, I only have 
$10,000 in my business LLC. I don't know where the money went, but I made a hundred. That's probably personal draws that you took because life happens. You know, we have to pay mortgage, rent, kids, back to school supplies, um, masks, and everything else. So remember, the members draw, personal draws are not tax deductible. So basically, you are anticipating your profit. You are taking from your profit, but make sure you have enough because there are two parties involved when profit happens. It's you and the IRS, okay? So there's always two when profit happens. Um, make sure you have the calculations done. Um, right on the important days, you know, there's no leftover to pay penalties. We don't like penalties. We can avoid penalties. Therefore, we're not going to pay for penalties. So penalties about W-2s, 1099s, filing on, on time. Um, for example, right now, the taxes for 2020, the partnerships and the escorts are due on September 15 for the 2020 tax year, September 15. So... I hope you made an extension and I hope that you can um, meet that deadline next month. Penalties for not filing a partnership or an S-Corp are, are pretty high. Invest time to understand your taxes. Keep the information organized. Um, the same way you invest time in your marketing, in your sales, you have to invest time in your taxes. Otherwise, you know, you don't take care of them. They're going to come up all cricket and not good. <laughs> um, we have the right not to pay more taxes than, than what by law corresponds to us, you know, so that's why we have to get organized. I'm the first one that says, you know, I don't want to pay more taxes than I really should. So remember, if you're paying taxes, it is because uh, you're having good results, positive results in your business as well. So when the profit happens, if you make good profits, there are two part involved there. IRS. And, um, and yourself as the owner. So make sure you, you keep track of uh, all of them. That's my, that's my presentation for today. Um, you know, I wanna make sure that you are aware that we have a new website and with more classes and videos available 24 seven. Just check out our website and uh, we, can, um, we can definitely um, get your feedback, learn from you as well. Let us know what you need, what you think of the classes, and uh, we can continue to put more videos, more educational opportunities uh, for you as well, okay? Thank you, thank you very much.